Hi, I'm Tyler Fultz. I'm a nuclear engineer with a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry. From engineering to operations to emergency response. I don't claim to know everything there is to know nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. If you like this video, please give me a like down below and go ahead and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. If you didn't like this video, please let me know down in the comments below as far as to what I can do better. I'm always looking to improve. Today we're going to be looking at another requested Kurtzgazat video on neutron stars, the most extreme things that are not black holes. <laughs> Let's take a look. Neutron stars are one of the most extreme and violent things in the universe. Giant atomic nuclei only a few kilometers in diameter, but as massive as stars. And they owe their existence to the death of something majestic. Stars exist because of a fragile balance. The mass of millions of billions of trillions of tons of hot plasma are being pulled inwards by gravity and squeeze material together with so much force that nuclei fuse. Hydrogen fuses into helium. This releases energy which pushes against gravity and tries to escape. As long as this balance exists, stars are pretty stable. That is one of the reasons why nuclear fusion is relatively easy on stars, because you have that much gravity, that much mass, just to push everything in there, and you can get away with it at a relatively low temperature, um, on the order of tens of millions of degrees, rather than hundreds of millions or billions of degrees Celsius. Actually, the hydrogen will be exhausted. Medium stars like our Sun go through a giant phase where they burn helium into carbon and oxygen before they eventually turn into white dwarfs. But in stars many times the mass of our Sun, things get interesting when the helium is exhausted. For a moment, the balance of pressure and radiation tips and gravity wins, squeezing the star tighter than before. The core burns hotter and faster, while the outer layers of the star swell by hundreds of times fusing heavier and heavier elements. Carbon burns to neon in centuries, neon to oxygen in a year, oxygen to silicon in months, and silicon to iron in a day. Fascinating, the uh, time span of these. It exponentially goes down the heavier elements you get. This is where you get things that are heavier than hydrogen and helium. That plus supernovas is how you make, it the, make the even heavier stuff or even hypernovas, kilonovas, all the other novas. <laughs> but yeah, this is where all your heavy elements come from. Then, death. Iron is nuclear ash. It has no energy to give and cannot be fused. The fusion suddenly stops and the balance ends. Without the outward pressure from fusion, the core is crushed by the enormous weight of the star above it. What happens now is awesome and scary. Particles like electrons and protons really don't want to be near each other. But the pressure of the collapsing star is so great that electrons and protons fuse into neutrons, which then get squeezed together as tightly as in atomic nuclei. An iron ball the size of the Earth is squeezed into a ball of pure nuclear matter the size of a city. But not just the core, the whole star implodes, gravity pulling the outer layers in at 25% the speed of light. This implosion bounces off the iron core, producing a shock wave that explodes outwards and catapults the rest of the star into space. This is what we call a supernova explosion, and it will outshine entire galaxies. What remains of the star is now a neutron star. Beautiful description of that, by the way, of supernova. Its mass is around a million times the mass of the Earth, but compressed to an object about 25 kilometers wide. It's so dense that the mass of all living humans would fit into one cubic centimeter of neutron star matter. That's roughly a billion tons in a space the size of a sugar cube. Put an Just a really big atomic nucleus. Um, another way of scaling this is it's an, an atom is, let's say it's the size of a baseball park. A, the nucleus of an atom is basically a mosquito on second base 
albeit at 99 point several nines percent of its mass. This stuff is just fascinating. Wait, that's Mount Everest in a cup of coffee. <laughs> From the outside, a neutron star is unbelievably extreme. Its gravity is the strongest outside black holes, and if it were any denser, it would become one. Yeah. Light is bent around it, meaning you can see the front and parts of the back. Their surfaces reach a million degrees Celsius compared to a measly 6,000 degrees for our sun. Okay, let's look inside a neutron star. Although these giant atomic nuclei are stars, in many ways they're also like planets with solid crusts over a liquid core. The crust is extremely hard. The outermost layers are made of iron left over from the supernova, squeezed together in a crystal lattice with a sea of electrons flowing through them. <laughs> Going deeper, gravity squeezes nuclei closer together. We find fewer and fewer protons as most merge to neutrons until we reach the base of the crust. Here, nuclei are squeezed together so hard that they start to touch. Protons and neutrons rearrange, making long cylinders or sheets enormous. <laughs> All these are different phases of pasta. <laughs> okay. Nuclei with millions of protons and neutrons lasagna. shaped like spaghetti and lasagna, which physicists call nuclear pasta. Nuclear pasta is so dense that it may be the strongest This I've never heard before on a scale of spaghetti to lasagna how densely packed is your star Aerial <laughs> in the universe basically unbreakable Lumps of pasta inside a neutron star can even make mountains at most a few centimeters high But many times as massive as the Himalayas centimeters mountains. eventually beneath the pasta we reach the core we're not really sure what the properties of matter are when they're squeezed this hard. <laughs> Protons and neutrons might dissolve into an ocean of quarks, a so-called quark-gluon plasma. Some of those quarks might turn into strange quarks, making a sort of strange matter with properties so extreme that we made a whole video about it. Or maybe they just stay protons and neutrons. No one knows for- Let me know if you want me to check that one out. Um, I've heard about strangelets and their craziness. And that's why we do science. That's all pretty heavy stuff, literally, so let's go back out into space. When neutron stars first collapse, they begin to spin very, very fast, like, like a ballerina pulling her arms in. Neutron stars are celestial ballerinas spinning many times per second. This creates pulses because their magnetic field creates a beam of radio waves which passes every time they spin. These radio pulsars are the best known type of neutron star, about 2,000 are known of in the Milky Way. These magnetic fields are the strongest in the universe. That's a lot. A quadrillion times stronger than Earth's after they're born. Give you a sense, uh, if you're not familiar, Tesla is a massive unit. Um, the massive magnetic fields on, say, a, um, an MRI machine, you're talking about three Tesla. They're called magnetars until they calm down a little. <laughs> but the absolute best kind of neutron stars are friends with other neutron stars. By radiating away energy as gravitational waves, ripples in space-time, their orbits can decay and they can crash into and kill each other in a killing over explosion that spews out a lot of their guts. When they do, the conditions become so extreme that for a moment, heavy nuclei are made again. It's not fusion putting nuclei together this time, but heavy neutron-rich matter falling apart and reassembling. Only very recently, we've learned that this is probably the origin of most of the heavy elements in the universe, like gold, uranium, and platinum. Sorry, Kurtz, because out for stealing your, stu your thunder a few minutes ago. I didn't realize this would get into that. <laughs> and dozens more. So then our two neutron stars collapse and become a black hole, dying yet again. Not only do stars have to die to create elements, they have to die twice. Yeah. <laughs> Over millions of years, these atoms will mix back into the galaxy, but some of them end up in a cloud which gravity pulls together to form stars and planets, repeating the cycle. Our solar system is one example, and the remains of those neutron stars that came before us are all around us. Our entire technological modern world was built out of the elements neutron stars made in eons past, sending these atoms on a 13 billion year journey to come together and make us and our world. And that's pretty cool. Until then, we can look at them on paper. 
good motivational thought. Think of that you're the product of billions of years of stardust forming, dying, forming, dying again. <laughs> Next time when you do something, think of all of what your particles have been through throughout eons. It's beautiful. Let me know what you think about that down in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.